A few years ago, I was at a college and somebody asked me about depression. That seems to be a biggie in this country. How do you overcome depression? What do you do? Well, see how it arises. See what happens first. A painful feeling arises first. Right after that painful feeling, tension and tightness arises in your mind. Then your thoughts start and then your habitual tendency to try to control the feeling with your thoughts and that makes the feelings bigger and more intense. And that leads to the birth of action. Leave me alone. I don't want to be, I don't want to be bothered. I'm depressed. And you get into your thoughts and trying to control your thoughts more and more and more. And that feeling, that painful feeling keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So what to do? A painful feeling arises. As soon as you notice that painful feeling, you use the six R's, which I haven't gone all the way through yet, but I will right now. You recognize that your mind has a painful feeling in it. You allow the space for that painful feeling to be there. Don't keep your attention on it. If you keep your attention on a painful feeling, that painful feeling is going to get bigger and more intense. You relax that tension and tightness in your head, in your mind. As soon as you relax, your mind is clear, your mind is bright and your mind is pure. Why? Because you've let go of craving. Now, <clears throat> you, have, <clears throat> you have to bring up something wholesome. And that is smile. Sounds odd. A lot of Buddhists don't like the idea that you're supposed to smile, but they're the ones that suffer the most. <laughs> <laughs> when you smile your mind becomes light and you become very observant when you smile it helps your mind to be more alert bring that smiling mind back to your object of meditation return and Repeat staying with that object of meditation for as long as you can. When you do this over a period of time, the, the amount of distraction becomes less and less because you're improving your mindfulness. And the time that you spend on your object of meditation gets to be longer and longer. As you stay on your object of meditation, your mind, I'm going to give you a definition of mindfulness. Mindfulness is remembering to observe how mind's attention moves from one thing to another. This is key. It's not trying to control anything. It's not trying to make anything different. It's just the observation mind. That's what mindfulness is. Mindfulness right now is starting to be catch-all phrase. And nobody ever gives you a really clear definition of it. You're supposed to know what mindfulness means. But it's, it's just like the word wisdom. Everybody knows ah, what wisdom is. It means to be wise, right? No, whoops, you can't use that word in the definition. What is wisdom? Wisdom is developing the ability to see this process. And when you are able to see it, you can let go more quickly. You, you're mind naturally tends to become more happy. <clears throat> That's the whole point of the meditation. 
It's learning how to naturally release and relax all of the suffering that we do when we try to control things. We can't make things happen the way they want to. They're going to happen the way they happen. But we can use the six R's and eventually there is personality change towards the positive because you're putting more and more wholesome things in your mind. And when you put more and more wholesome things in your mind, things like depression become weaker. Now this is a kind of hindrance, depression. The last thing you want to do when you're depressed is to smile or laugh. That's the last thing you feel like doing, and that's the first thing you should be doing. You start smiling, you start laughing with yourself about how crazy your mind is. Everybody's mind is crazy when it has craving in it. So there's a, a big problem that we have because we keep taking taking everything personally. This is my feeling, this is my anger, I have a right to be angry because you're causing me suffering and I'm gonna throw it back at you. But the truth is you are making yourself suffer by taking these emotional upsets personally and fighting with them. You wind up saying things that later you wish you hadn't said. You wind up doing things that you wish you hadn't have done. This is how wars start. And it's war within yourself. I don't like this feeling. I don't <coughs> want it there. Then you try to think the feeling and then you come up with all kinds of stories justifying what you do when you have that kind of feeling arise in your mind. And you cause yourself suffering and you cause other people around you suffering because of that. So what we have to do is learn how this process actually does work and then <coughs> Practice the way to change. Almost everybody that comes, well I say almost, I have, to, I have to say that because a lot of people are born into Buddhism, they don't have a choice. But everybody that really understands what suffering is, they start looking for a way to let go of all the pain they go through. And it's, it's hard work. It's not easy to let go of this pain because we're attached to it. This is me. This is mine. This is who I am. Well, did you ask that painful feeling to come up? Did you ask all of those thoughts to come up and try to fight that painful feeling? Well, no, not really. It's an impersonal process that we're taking personally and that is the cause of suffering. When I give retreats in Asia and particularly, in particular, <clears throat> almost everybody that's practicing Buddhism, they know about the Four Noble Truths. And the first noble truth is suffering. And to them, that translates into everything is suffering. And that's not true. The second part of the noble truth is, there is a cause of suffering. What is the cause of suffering? Craving. I don't like it. This is a painful feeling, mental or physical, it doesn't matter. I don't want that feeling to be there. Clinging. 
all your stories about it and taking it so personally. This is my idea. This is the way it has to be because my, my mind has told me this over and over again. That doesn't necessarily mean it's true. What you have to do is understand that there is another noble truth that's really important and it's the most important part. The cessation of suffering. Every time you use the six R's and you relax that tension and tightness, your mind is clear, your mind is bright, and your mind is pure. There's no thoughts in your mind at that time. But you bring that pure mind back to a smiling mind. That means your mind becomes even lighter and more alert. And you bring that smiling mind back to your object of meditation, which is, for me, most of the time I'm teaching loving kindness meditation. And that is a good, happy feeling in the center of your chest. And it feels good. And a lot of people have a misunderstanding of what meditation actually is. The Buddha said there's three parts to your meditation. You practice your generosity. You take somebody as your object of meditation and you radiate a good feeling to them. But you can't radiate a good feeling to them unless you have it yourself. So you make a wish for their happiness and feel that happiness and then give it away. That's generosity. And I've already talked about the precepts. If you truly want to be successful with your meditation, you absolutely have to keep your precepts. And this is a sometime, not a sometime practice, it's an all the time practice. Just like generosity, you want to give in three different ways. You give with your, your body, helping somebody else so that they don't have as much suffering. You give with your speech, saying things that make other people feel good about themselves and feel happy, and with your mind. So, <clears throat> I just got through writing that book, Life is Meditation, Meditation is Life. There's no part of your life that you can't be meditating. and what Bhante was bringing up the, today at lunch, the word meditation is, it, it's changed a lot of ways that people think what meditation actually is. But the Pali word is bhavana, and bhavana does not mean ment meditation, it means mental development. Can you develop your mind so that you're happy and wish other people happiness while you're walking down the road? If you can remember to do it, yeah, of course. Or when you're standing in line at the, at the store or doing whatever, you're practicing your generosity by giving good feelings to people around you, mentally and physically and through your communication. So this is a kind of mental development that is not, not just about sitting on a cushion. This is about true change and personality development. A lot of people that come here, they're quite successful with their practice. They get to certain levels of the meditation and all of a sudden they, 
they go home and they say, everybody's telling me that I'm a lot more mellow than I used to be. I don't get so angry like I used to. Well, that's because you're changing. You're replace, replacing an old habit with a new habit. And the new habit leads to happiness not only for you, but for other people around you. And this is karma too. What kind of mental actions or verbal actions or uh, bodily actions do you do? If you lead to the happiness of yourself and other people around you, you can be rest assured that good karma will come back to you. If you break the precepts, you cause problems for other people, you have, you want revenge because somebody else did something to you, you can look forward to those kind of problems happening over and over and over again till you learn that that's not the way to do it. That is karma. Now you're sitting in meditation and a hindrance comes up. Okay? What you did in the past arises in the present. So you have a hindrance. What you do with what arises in the present dictates what happens in the future. You have a choice to make. You can fight with these thoughts and feelings and take them personally and get really caught up in emotional nonsense stuff or not. It's your choice. If you choose to fight with it and try to control it and try to make it be the way you want to be, you're fighting with the truth. Because this stuff arose, it's there. That's the truth. When a painful feeling arises, it's there. Anytime you try to change the truth, anytime you try to control the truth, anytime you try to make the truth be the way you want it to be, that is a cause of suffering. So you have a choice. Fight with it, have it come back over and over and over again until you learn that's not the way to do it. Or, you can start using the six R's and letting it go and relaxing into these things. And a lot of people, they're absolutely shocked and surprised that this really does work. At all different levels, when you relax into things and not take them personally, let go and you start going deeper into your practice. That's the way it works. Now, <clears throat> the hindrances, as much as I was talking about them in a negative way, actually are very necessary for your practice of meditation. The hindrances are showing where your attachments are, where you're taking it personally. And then you use the six R's with the hindrance. At first, you come, you've never done any meditation before, you might get distracted for two or three minutes before you notice it. And then you've got to use the six R's to come back to your object to meditation and your mind goes away again for a period of time. But as you become more familiar with using the six R's, the length of time that you're distracted becomes less. The length of time you're staying with your object of meditation becomes more. Now, as you allow the space for that hindrance to be there and you <coughs> relax into it, it starts to get weaker because you're not trying to resist it. 
You're not trying to control it anymore. And as it becomes weaker, it just doesn't come up so often. Finally, it disappears. When it disappears, you have a very strong feeling of relief. And right after that, joy arises. And you feel happy. And the joy will be there for a period of time. And then you will feel your mind become very tranquil and peaceful. And your mind and your body become very comfortable. And your mind stays with your object of meditation for a few minutes. It can be three minutes, five minutes, ten minutes, whatever. Now what I just described to you is called a jhana in, in the Buddhist teaching. And jhana means a level of understanding. What kind of understanding did you gain from that experience? That this is part of an impersonal process and you start understanding more and more how to let go of things that used to catch you and cause suffering. And you start letting them go and they start fading away. That's how you purify your mind. 